I feel honoured to be asked to speak before Michael's presentation of this year's award to Suzanne Chevelle Carlson. Her father, Charles Chevelle, um, was accosted one night travelling on the Spirit of Progress train from Melbourne to Sydney by an enthusiastic father who had a son wanting to get into the picture business as a photographer. Charles invited the man to send his son along to the Everly Street studio. Charles was shooting 40,000 horsemen at the time. Elsa Chevelle noticed this eager young man on the set and this is his particular interest in the camera department. She urged Charles that they better find some money and pay him. They did. That enthusiastic young man was Damien Parra, soon to become the legendary wartime cinematographer. His son became a film producer and is here tonight. Kenji Hall and Charles were regarded as rivals by many, but in reality their body of work was entirely different to each other. KG, the polished producer-director of the studio system, Charles and Elsa, the true independent filmmakers of their time. Nonetheless, Ken was envious of Charles' success with the censor each time he had a love scene or used nudity on the screen. In the wake of the bounty, the censors very nearly destroyed the impact of the bare-breasted Tahitian girls. Charles won his appeal, and although he was to run up against the censors again with tonight's film and the nudity in Sons of Matthew, he always won, uh, won out. How do you do it, KG asked Charles one day. Oh, come on, Ken. I've learned from experience. You put five or six extra shots which you don't want, knowing the censors will cut them out, leaving the one you really want. KG thought this was somewhat outrageous, but admitted he wished he'd thought of the ploy for his film, The Silence of Dean Maitland. <laughs> Frankly, Sons of Matthew is my favourite of the Cheval collection. On asking why we weren't seeing it this evening, I was told the soundtracks of reels one and two and three were unintelligible. Why has it not been restored? I suspect money. Michael Lubenstein, you have a major task ahead of you. Nitrate won't wait. <laughs> Shellac recordings are beginning to flake. A lot more government money is needed to be allocate, allocated to restoration and preservation. But what is the Australian film industry doing in this regard, I ask? If it's good enough for Sony Pictures to fully restore Michael Powell's Columbia picture, Age of Consent, with all the Paul Del Pratt paintings and the Peter Sculthorpe score reinstated, then why not the distributors and exhibitors of Australia pitching in? Yes, the Kodak Atlab collection is to be applauded, but it's really only scratching the surface. The nitrate films are still waiting. The gross box office in Australia last year, quote unquote, despite the downturn in business, was $1.1 billion. Should it not be an encouragement or a requirement that the American majors and our exhibitors, Hoyts Event and Village, work together to contribute to the NFSA's funds to accelerate the restoration program. Thanks to ATLAB, Wake and Fright was digitally restored. The archive could not afford, could only afford a chemical restoration, but still contribute substantially to the restoration as ATLAB took the decision to contribute the rest to cover the digital restoration. The industry can afford it and should be doing more. Not a good look, Michael. But tonight's film is a good look. It's also an historic moment for this audience. For tonight, we are seeing a 35 millimeter print being projected by Ian Hansen with traditional changeovers between the reels and the right aspect ratio. <laughs> KG and Charles would approve. Watch out, though, for the continuity mistakes by the art department towards the end of the film. Charles and Elsa obviously thought at rushes one night that some closer shots were needed. See if you can pick them. Thank you. <laughs> 